Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Since the early days of warfare, natural barriers have played a crucial role in both attack and defense. For a mobile army, a natural barrier is more daunting than a river. This is the reason why, to this day, bridges remain among the most critical tactical structures in any conflict. Military strategists have spent centuries attempting to determine the best, most efficient way for their armies to cross rivers quickly and efficiently without leaving themselves open to attack. Around the world, the general consensus now focuses on having the army bring bridges with them. This is the M3 amphibious rig, also known as the M3 bridging and ferrying system. Manufactured by the German engineering firm EWK near the end of the last century. It essentially functions as a self-deployable floating road. The M3 is a foldable vehicle that resembles a military cargo truck. Aside from water jets, it has a standard wheel setup that allows it to drive on land. Upon approaching a waterway, however, the vehicle can unfold itself to reveal two large floating pontoons. These pontoons can be extended to create a bridge or ferry platform for vehicles and personnel to cross rivers, lakes, and other bodies of water. Multiple M3 rigs can be joined together to bridge wider gaps, with each vehicle extending to nearly 43 feet. And because of the buoyancy of the pontoons, the M3 can support a wide variety of heavy vehicles, including tanks. One of the oldest methods of crossing rivers is to use floating, deployable pontoons. Militaries worldwide, including the United States, still utilize these portable systems to create durable bridges for crossing rivers and other waterways. The pontoons themselves can be carried by helicopter or truck. They are very compact during transport 
but can easily be unfolded once they are in the water. Each individual section can then be affixed together, creating a semi-permanent bridge strong enough to carry even the heaviest tanks and vehicles. The pontoons even have road markings to help manage traffic. Unlike the M3, which is self-driving on both land and water, these pontoons require the assistance of boats to be moved into position. This can slow the process down, though the final result is typically much longer lasting. Because the pontoons require boats to move them into position, an army planning to utilize these mobile bridge systems must carry boats with them. This led to the development of the M30 bridge erection boat. These simple, maneuverable watercraft can be carried on large trucks and quickly deployed into the water whenever a pontoon bridge is needed. As other trucks or helicopters release sections of the bridge, the boats can retrieve the floating pontoons and begin moving them into position. Because the M30s are designed with a flat bottom, they are capable of maneuvering even in very shallow water. Over the years, these versatile pontoon bridges have earned the nickname Ribbon Bridges. However, there are times when the waterway to be crossed is so large that there simply aren't enough pontoons to bridge the gap. For this reason, the M30 and other boats used in the process are designed with particularly powerful diesel engines. This allows them to attach to the pontoons and actively ferry both people and vehicles across. They can also move the entire bridge structure to a better location if necessary. This sort of versatility is extremely important especially in an active combat situation. Tanks pose a particularly unique problem for bridging due to their sheer size and weight. For instance, the average M1 Abrams tank weighs around 60 tons and measures more than 32 feet long. Though they are powerful enough to forge shallow rivers and streams, 
they cannot risk entering an area where the soil is too soft, as they would quickly sink. Ribbon bridges are the perfect solution to this problem, as their hollow design allows enough buoyancy to support even the largest tanks. And because they can be easily secured together, it's possible to make a platform big enough to accommodate several vehicles. With M30 boats positioned at the sides, the combined sections of the pontoon can be turned into a temporary ferry to move vehicles across massive waterways with ease. Because a single M1 Abrams tank can cost as much as $10 million, the US military was very cautious about determining whether or not their ribbon bridge systems could support them. Using controlled environments like ponds, small lakes, and even pools, personnel from the Army Engineering Research and Development Center were able to put their bridges and pontoons through rigorous tests. This included using highly detailed scaled models that may not seem sophisticated, but are incredibly accurate and directly correlate with how hydrodynamic forces would impact a crossing in an actual situation. Of course, floating bridges are by no means limited to military use. Countries around the world have been investing in floating pedestrian bridges, especially in areas where infrastructure and the finances to build it is lacking. One particularly successful bridge was installed in Lakoni, Kenya, where some 64,000 people use it to cross the river every single day. Residents had previously had to use a ferry to cross the waterway, which led to significant delays and problems. Thanks to the versatile floating bridge, Kenyans can travel much faster and more efficiently. In this case, only the middle section of the bridge is designed to float. This ensures that the bridge can still be moved in order to let ships pass when needed. Perhaps one of the most famous floating bridge structures in history is the SR-520, also known as the Governor Albert D. Rosalini Bridge. Located near Seattle, the bridge crosses Lake Washington, connecting the major city with the smaller city of Medina. True to its name, sections of the bridge are built on 33 pontoons that keep it afloat on the water's surface. The SR-520 floating bridge is roughly 7,700 feet long and features two spans a western high-rise span that crosses the Mont Lake Cut and a longer eastern floating span that crosses Lake Washington. The bridge was actually constructed back in the 1960s when the idea of a floating highway was very unique indeed. The solution was initially presented as a temporary measure, yet it remained in service until 2016 when it was replaced by another floating bridge of the same name. The new design was not only better at handling traffic, but included the latest earthquake proofing in its engineering. There are many ways to bring land vehicles across the water 
but how does one carry boats across land? This was the question posed to the engineers in charge of the Falkirk wheel. This remarkable engineering marvel is located in Falkirk, Scotland. It's a unique boat lift that connects the Forth and Clyde canals with the Union Canal by means of a giant rotating mechanism. Previously, boats had to use a series of 11 locks to bridge the vertical distance between the two canals. But the wheel solves this problem by using two large caissons of water chambers, each capable of holding a boat. The caissons are connected by a central arm that rotates in a vertical plane, lifting each boat up to a bridge they can use to continue forward into the Union Canal. When a boat enters one of the caissons, the wheel rotates, lifting the boat and the water to the level of the higher canal in under 15 minutes. The caissons are balanced to minimize the energy required to lift the boats, and the wheel operates using an electric motor system. As the caisson reaches the top, it aligns with the artificial water bridge, forming a watertight seal. The gate on the caisson is then opened, allowing the boat to move forward. Each caisson can carry about 500 tons, which must account for the boat, its occupants and cargo, and the water itself. Due to weight restrictions, the Falkirk wheel mostly carries small and canal cargo boats. In total, the lift can carry two 66-foot long vessels at a time, moving them a total of 79 feet up or down. Over the years, the Falkirk Wheel has evolved into a major tourist attraction, with visitors able to take boat tours on the wheel to experience this unique engineering achievement firsthand. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.